Hello, hello. Uh, welcome to No Man's Sky. And I wanted to return because Starfield, you know, has been featured and Todd, the God Howard has come out and marketed the crap out of it and everyone's hyped and, you know, what else is out there? Uh, let me teleport somewhere else because I've gone to the wrong place. This is the game that is the what everyone wants Starfield not to be at release, but to be kind of like where it is now. So let's go to go to this one. So No Man's Sky, it's really, <clears throat> it's a lot better now. Significantly better now, of course. It was better, you know, uh, a couple of years. Took, just took a little while to get going. But I suppose the main difference between No Man's Sky and a Starfield will be just really the artistic design decisions. So I think a big part of it, from what we've seen of the planets they've shown, is that No Man's Sky seems more cartoonish. And this has a lot to do with the, the colour choices. Let's just jump in. Whilst, you know, Starfield, again, if it, the shooting side of things, Starfield is, looks like it's going to be a lot better. And in terms of the leveling of your character, the RPG mechanics, Bethesda's RPG mechanics, look to be the massive difference between the two. But No Man's Sky does have more, well, it'll have more content. For, uh, you know, from, which is, again, it's been out longer. It's all totally normal. It has the freight battles, has the pirates. Oh gosh. Ah, oh, the fleet wants to talk to me. Bugger off. Photon cannon. There we go. Stop talking to me, I'm busy. <laughs> So we have a more cluttered space at times in No Man's Sky. And then you have the asteroids around the planets. You have, again, different sorts of planets, different sort of stats and things. And you can have a little look at them and go, oh, goodness me, that's totally different. And then you can, you got your inventory stuff. So the, This is kind of the worries I have for Starfield, is that a bit more of the inventory management things in terms of, you know, one of the things No Man's Sky has had multiple updates to do, which is to increase your maximum capacity and for your upgrades for your suit and things like that. And it, it's gone through a huge amount of changes in terms of, you know, equipment and upgrades. And so we've got extra craft here and I've got the freighter as well. I've got my own freighter. So, you know, you got everything here that Starfield is trying to be better. So they're trying to match what No Man's Sky has and be better. But that said, they won't have as many planets with the variability, but then at the same time, maybe you can cut down on some of the... Some of the planets, m many of the planets in No Man's Sky are trash. So some of them just aren't worth visiting, aren't worth staying in. Like, again, I've got this OK Planet Cactus. It's not... It's not, it's not very nice. But at least you can name all the animals on the planet. So I suppose whether they're going to have that similar <coughs> scan and name this can be really interesting. So Tropic of Peace, I think that's where my main one is. So, and we've got the flora and fauna. I've um, got... Oh, I'm trying to just... Uh, we've got... Where are you? No, I don't want objectives. I want... There we go. Uh, summon the anomaly. So you can basically summon a Death Star. <laughs> it's not really a Death Star, though. That's a bit ridiculous. Uh, uh, you got the ship collection. You can't customize the ships, so that's a big difference. So 
But it's, you know, it's in space. It's a space exploration game. The campaign, again, has changed a lot over time, so it's, everything's got a lot better. Yes, you can do inside pilot view. Uh, Freight and Squadron. Starship Communicator. Photo mode. Recharge equipment. But what does No Man's Sky have that Starfield doesn't have? Well, No Man's Sky is multiplayer. So you can run around and explore all the galaxies with your friends. Which you couldn't do again on launch, but now you can. So you see other people's ships. My one is really, really weird looking, I'll be honest. But it's not like a living ship. There's like super rare, ultra duper, mega rare ships. And there's other people around, so you're not alone in the grand universe. Now, you can do expeditions and things. You can do missions together at the Nexus. So you can actually do these, and then it'll call out and ask if anyone else wants to do them. Some of the grinding in the game is a bit obnoxious, I'll be honest. But, you know, there's cosmetic things, different backpacks and color stuff. Different suits and all sorts of things you can get. So you got all these sorts of things you can put in your house, which I'll teleport to my nice house in a bit. And people just randomly give you stuff. So you do have to be kind of careful because people can give you things that just are worth so much money that you just kind of break the game. That said, you can break the game's economy anyway, which is one of the fun things about No Man's Sky is you finding a way to make huge amounts of money. Uh, and learning different languages, because one of the things... It's not that everyone speaks English in No Man's Sky, everyone speaks different languages. There's three different groups, three different languages, and you can learn words at a time with conversations, and you can get more information. And again, it doesn't hinder you or anything not knowing them, but it's just nice. Ooh, black hole limits. So it's really the stylistic difference between them and the multiplayer aspects the first person shooting the shooting in this you can use shields and you know go invisible and things like that and you can you know different types of weaponry but uh, the enemy variation has improved tremendously a lot more sentinel stuff which is the alien the sort of the the nemesis the thing you're fighting against and you're the abnormality because again you would you know multiverse kind of this hub is a it's a bit hard to explain but it makes somewhat sense so as soon as there's new upgrades so we've got lots and lots of aliens so this is kind of the other point is that communication with aliens from what i've seen from starfield so far it didn't seem like there were a lot of alien races to talk to so it was kind of kind of odd to be perfectly honest. Uh, you got to get salvage data to unlock different things to build for your house. We can have a look at all the new stuff. Is there new stuff? Is there new... Oh, that's just the underwater vehicle. Which again, you can build underwater bases. Oh, and you can build uh, race tracks. Got all sorts of stuff here. So there's a whole bunch of things you can uh, research. Now these aren't too hard to get the salvage data. So it's just... You just find a nice planet, and you can search around it and get stacks of it. Like, all that you'd ever need. It's just, there's a couple ways to do it to make it easier. Again, No Man's Sky is a game that you need a guide, or two, to really get the best out of it. Because going on your own, things can get a bit complicated. Okay, we're all good there. And you can customize your character and be, you know, all that sort of stuff. But it, your <coughs> sort of character, it matters and it doesn't matter at the same time. So you still have, you know, there are different, because there's the three different alien types. You do have sort of races, racism really there that you've got to worry about. But it's not too bad. <laughs> I mean, not too bad. It kind of does depend. Cannon, I'll take Amplifier. I'm not worried about it. All right, let's go. 
So it, again, it's a more feels like a more cartoony space game. Um, actually, wait, we'll go back. But I think it's worth giving a try. So this is this is kind of what I'm making this video about. Is I want, I'd like people who are interested in Starfield to play a bit of No Man's Sky and go, okay. So this is what I'm in for a little bit of what I'm in for. Again, I feel like Starfield will provide stronger directions. So we can jump into anyone else's nice place. Community hearts. Let's go to one of these. Yeah, let's go there. You can teleport to other people's bases, your friends' bases, and just random community ones. The warping animation has changed. <laughs> it's pretty odd. So yeah, big warning, flashing lights. I don't know why they do it like this. Uh, bugs and things have gotten a lot better, of course. But I feel like, you know... Starfield's going to take a little while to get its feet on solid Earth, as it were. So with Bethesda's history, and again, Todd had said that they had been testing and playing the game for a year. I find that... I mean, playing it at a release version for a year, maybe? But he never said that specifically, so I feel like there's a bit of a bit of room for maybe, maybe, maybe it's you know maybe things will be all good, maybe they won't be. But knowing the history, chances are things are going to be pretty um, oh, I got a shield. Okay. Ugh. Ugh. Mm. Damn, this place is crazy. over there now you do have a boost pack which again the second I saw the boost pack in Starfield I was like oh yeah so so much of Starfield's ideas are just straight from No Man's Sky but then it's not like No Man's Sky is a totally original either but in terms of modern games there's a lot that's just like straight from it <laughs> so <laughs> comparison is um, inevitable so, th again, that could be a good thing for Starfield because No Man's Sky, you know, started poorly. And if Starfield can start better in terms of bugs and things, again, it could be good. No Man's Sky started single player and then became multiplayer. So, because it wasn't actually functioning multiplayer at the start. So, again, hope for maybe that, but I very much doubt it. But it is possible. So, as soon as they say, no, it's not going to happen, you just say, well, it happened. Over in No Man's Sky, they they worked it out. They got way more planets. Ah! Ah, uh, your boost pack recharges. The camera is not great, so that's probably one of the things that... Again, first person versus third person. You'll have the third person mode in Starfield, but... I primarily play first person. Oh! Oh god. Okay. Ouch, my legs. So it's a pretty impressive base that they made. Is something attacking me? Yes, 
remembers faces. So we do have the weird alien life forms, which... Oh, goodness me. So it's like a pineapple thing? That's it. So some of them are hostile, so you do have to fight them. Other ones are not hostile at all, and you don't have to worry about them. This is a big chunky. We can tease out the honey. Don't even ask me how that works. That makes no sense. So now we're riding it. So originally we couldn't control it, but it seems we can suggest the directions. We kind of can control, kind of can't. We faster. So yeah, we can ride strange alien life forms. Explore unknown worlds. Already. It's all here. <laughs> and the game ain't that expensive. It's cheap. I mean, you could get copies at certain times for very, very cheap. We have glowing mushrooms. I actually get a huge amount of money each time I scan them because I've got to set up my character in that way. But I just want to, you know, look! Look! What's that sound? Strongness? Strongest main type field, what's that about? We can collect the sweet root. Um, I can summon vehicles and things. There's no need for that, though. Really, there's no need to waste resources like that. Um, uh, uh, no. Uh, there we go. I want to do... Return to space anomaly. We can do... Summon a vehicle. We can summon... We can't summon any of these, though. Because they're too far away. We haven't got the freighter set up. And I've got my other ships... A little prettier. And I got the weird ship. I got my creatures. So these are my buddies. So this is an alien creature that I've met on a different planet. So I thought, you know, why not become a friend? You feed them food, they join, you can... You can't um, do like pet battles or anything, so that'd be nice if you could. Um, I've got a grass pillar, which I'll show you. You can't ride it. It's from a planet where... These were the only life forms on the planet. These giant... Um, oh, I can't remember the word for it. Omni hexagon or something, some sort of weird word to describe it. But yeah, so the, these are the only creatures. Is there some? Oh, there's a. Okay, that's fine. But yeah, there were little ones and big ones, and I thought, why not try and, you know, tame it? He's, he's scouting ahead.
But yeah. You have all sorts of weird, weird creatures. Because again, they're randomly generated, so you got all sorts of strange things. Um, I've got a little dude, a mantid mantidia. I'll show you. It's a glowing ball. I got lots of creature pellets, so I'm not too worried about them. And I want to show you my big one. So we got that one, and we got we got the fish, and we got this one. Yamakini. Oh, it's not too happy at the minute. Let's give it a treat. So it's like a dinosaur from a planet with uh, dinosaurs on it. It's a bit bigger than the normal one. But you can, you know, do a bunch of interesting things to make them huge. You can make them really, really, really big. But yeah, so you can ride dinosaurs like, ah, uh, you know, there's a lot you can do. <laughs> a lot of interesting stuff. And I just wanted to share it, you know. I've added these guns to the side, but he can't actually use them. Which is a bit sad. But you have like a robot thing. You can, okay, I want to go and teleport. Uh, let's go return to space anomaly. It's alright, the creature comes with me. So, I suppose the big thing about No Man's Sky is what to do is really up to you. In terms of you can do the main story stuff. Or you can try and head to the center of the universe. Which again, that takes a long effort too. Or you can just generally explore. So it doesn't hold your hand. Only early on. You know, if you feel like it. But for the most part... Oh, we're in the salty system still. So let's... Uh, this way. You can do expeditions with groups of people or on your own. There's giant sandworms. There's all sorts of expansions that they've added that are all free. So once you own the game, you can play them. Uh, this way. But it's... There's a lot. And I really... You know, I feel like... If you're excited for Starfield, you should be excited to play No Man's Sky for the most part. Again, you've got the unique... Let's go to this Cloud City one. That's pretty sick. you got the unique uh, Bethesda style in terms of dialogue and all of those sorts of things. Here, you don't have... You have interesting dialogue, again, because of the alien languages and learning the languages and things like that, but it's it's different. It's a different feeling than, say, a Fallout or, um, you know, Fallout 3 or Fallout 4 or just Skyrim or Oblivion sort of thing. It's a, it's a bit different. So, again, <coughs> two game companies can make the same game and make complete, make the same... try to make the same game but end up with two different completely games. But I just feel as though this No Man's Sky has a lot to offer. And, you know, if you're excited for Starfield, you can't wait. You want something to sort of scratch that itch. I think No Man's Sky is the way to go. Okay, so we've got like the... Can I stand on this? No, I can't. Okay. So it is like that. Nice. Wee. Does it have an elevator? That'd be pretty cool. So can we... Supply Depot. Storing oxygen. Yoink. <laughs> what is this one? The Pyrite? Yoink. Some sodium.
Uh oh. Time to run. She. What in the world is that? Holy crap. Uh, methodical diet flowers. Okay, that is a uh, interesting creature. Never seen that before. And that's kind of, I think, you know, the big part of No Man's Sky is you just go from place to place and you see some weird stuff. Let's, uh... Number attempt, because I'm... Um... Okay, so that was an interesting place. I'm doing this old Star Wars... Cloud City thing? Yeah, Cloud City. Bespin? Bespin? Yeah, Bespin, Cloud City. Land old Calrissian. Alright, so I managed to steal some... Get some loot. It's fine. Okay, so what do we get? How long we got? Okay, 7,000 there. We've got 4,000 there. Because again, I've already got huge amounts of resources. So one of the things you'll notice at the top of my screen is I have a bit of money. Just a little bit of money. Just uh, 619 million. More than enough to do pretty much anything in the game that I want to do. So that's kind of where I'm kind of chill in terms of No Man's Sky, in terms of the progression. Because I did spend a fair bit of time grinding for cash. Using the... Some some dubious methods. Oh, it's all... It's just... Some clever, you know, manufacturing. That's how I'll describe it. And then someone just gifted me some stuff and I got a couple hundred million from that. But I already had a couple hundred million, so it wasn't a big deal. It's one of those ones where... They didn't break the game for me, I'd already broke it. <laughs> in terms of the market. Um, I want to go to God's Love Worm Base Frozen Rock Alright, we've got to go there Oh Blissful Weather, that's really good So, when you search the greater universe, you're trying to find a planet that has great conditions for building a base. So you want good weather, you don't want toxic, because some planets are toxic, you don't want lack of life, you want a mix of life and all sorts of creatures, but you don't want hostile creatures. Some creatures are really pain in the ass, and they attack you constantly. And then there's also the sentinels, so if the planet has a heavy sentinel population, then they'll constantly, anytime you do any sort of terrain editing, any sort of digging or harvesting, then they'll come over and go, don't do that. And they'll attack you, and then eventually a giant robot will chase you down and try and kill you. Alright, so we have a blood lake. Alright. We have... Atmosphere harvester. Oh, no fuel. So we have these roly polies. Days of Rizzeria. Alright, I'll show you the robot, if I can summon my robot here. Can I do that or not? Okay. So this is the Minotaur. So there's a number of different vehicles you can use. Even though we're in someone else's base, it still lets you summon them. Some plants are evil, so you can just destroy them. Oh, wait. 
you can also make it go uh, follow you with its own AI once you install the AI unit in there what the heck is that uh, here we go so we have a big booster I've got the recharge pretty good so I can just keep boosting Uh, you have various objectives on the planet, various things you can scan for. So you can tag, like say, this knowledge shrine. You can use different sweeping scans. You can look for hot spots, mineral supplies, gas. Scan big rock. Alright, so we get a bit of a wider look at the planet. Eh, it's not bad. I've seen better. Teleport again! No Man's Sky is a good game. Come back, have a go. See if you enjoy playing it for a bit. Starfield comes out. You play that. You will have noticed I am on PlayStation 5, so, I, you know, no Starfield for me. But I'm not too worried about it, honestly. Because one of the things... I think the facial animation face capture, for one, on Starfield looks atrocious. And the... So I just mean the facial movements when they talk. And the lack of aliens is kind of, as in talking aliens, you know, like, like these random guy like it. The lack of these sorts of dudes. And the difference. One of the things about No Man's Sky that I think it is good is the different language. I feel like that does add a sense of foreignness in terms of when you're exploring through the galaxy, the galaxies. You feel as though you are an alien traveling through, and everything else is different. But there is a uniformness which I do think. In terms of game design, maybe they could have been a bit, a bit cleverer. So, let's go to Planet Peace. Pretty sure this is my good one. Yeah, so, I... I'm a little hesitant on Starfield, just in general. I just think... I like the RPG stuff, so I'm sure that'll be great. I'm not too worried about it. Like, I think that's probably going to be the strength of the game. Uh, always hoarding inventory things. All that's always great. Uh, this is my main base. So this is where I did all my cooking. So... You have to refine... You refine things. And you can do clever refining. You mix stuff together to get other stuff. And... Um, it just enables you to make a shit ton of money. So other people will randomly enter the system as well. Maybe they'll come to your base. Maybe probably not, but they can. It doesn't bother me in the slightest either, so. But yeah, this is my base because <coughs> I've got water. And I like it. But um I suppose in terms of the presentation, I think the Starfield looks really good. And it's just not... No Man's Sky <coughs> performs well, I think, now. But at the same time, there's a randomness of colours that doesn't feel natural. It feels a bit... Well, again, it's supposed to feel alien, and that's what it does. But it's kind of that decision to let it be procedurally generated in a way that makes everything feel so alien, as opposed to following, you know, colour theory and... 
giving you that feeling of familiarity. God damn it. And yes, you can go underwater. Better resummon that. <laughs> that was awful. So there's a lot to do, a lot to build. There's a uh, upgrading your hyperdrive. You need certain materials, and you progress through, and you get different materials and things like that. But I don't know. It's it's kind of a, it's a weird thing. I feel like I've played enough of No Man's Sky. But if you haven't played it, I think you get you know a good 50 hours out of just you know stuffing around and getting all the different equipment and upgrades and things and exploring around. Ah, shit, they're going for me. Damn evil. All right, let's go. So yeah, while I'm being attacked by this random um, ship flying around, uh, uh, no, I want this. Uh, where's my shield? Fusion engine, man the cannon. Uh, can we get a?
Or where is he? Okay. Ah. <laughs> Intense dog fight. She is nearly down. Pop that. All right. Let's get out of here before the interceptors arrive. So it's not like you're in a lifeless universe. There's a lot going on. Oh, bugger off. Whoa! Alright, quickly. Uh, repair my ship, repair my ship. Uh, where are we? Hyper drive, launch thruster, deflect a shield. Use the sodium nitrate. Okay. Finish it! Oh, damn, he's shit, he's been charged there. God damn. Bagger off! Where are you? Finish it! Oh my god, they just never end! Okay, here we go. Alright, we got him. Get him! Get him! Alright, uh, 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 quickly. 
away. Charge the goddamn air shields. Come on, get me out of here. Get off my ass! Oh my gosh. Why did this become a suddenly an intense space battle? Stop it! Alright, let's see if we can land in one of these freighters. What are you doing? Stop it! Uh, where's the entrance? Well, let's try this one. Alright, we managed to escape. Holy crap. Okay, so we covered that. Ah. Alright, we're a legend now. Destroyed 80 starships, great. Um, we can recruit people and they can man facilities in your base or on your freighter and they can in manufacturing and your freighter, all the stuff that on Starfield you can do in your normal spaceship, you can do in a freighter. And you can do way more in a freighter, of course, in No Man's Sky. So, like all the features they talk about, you know, it's all been done. So, again, there's no excuse for them not having them if they want to beat the competition. Commander! An air of weary authority clearly marks this being as the freighter's captain. How much is this one? 10 million. I gotta compare it. My current freighter's worth a lot more money. But this one's a B class. Nah, that's fine. <sighs> but we escaped the battle. Okay. So that's a positive. So each freighter has like a massive, um, they have a customizable interior in terms of you can have a whole bunch of levels of manufacturing things and all sorts of stuff going on. Uh, okay, one last place I'll show you and that'll probably conclude the tour. Okay, so I want to go to... Yeah, it's alright. Alright. Um... Uh, where is it? Where is it? There we go. Uh, that's it. I've forgotten the buttons for pulse jump. That's why we are stuck in that dogfight earlier.
Alright, so this is a space station. <clears throat> and there's one in each sector. And this is where you do all your trading, really. Until you've got, you know, your own trading station. And you're in the right system. And this is where you get your ships. This is where you buy them. Because you can just... You can just... <laughs> oh, God! Where am I heading? There it is. So you can just wait for ships to rock up and you can buy them. <laughs> Talk to the people and... Again, you want to be in the better economies in terms of more likely to get good ships. Uh, it saves every time you jump in and out of the ship. It's a really important thing to do. And people do like deathless runs and all sorts of stuff. Hunting each other down and... It's actually... There's quite a lot of fun sort of stuff you can do. Uh, so you have your various uh, faction groups, but you know, you can get unhappy with a lot of them. Quite easy. Like when I blew up that ship earlier. And then you got a whole bunch of stuff you can buy so you can make things. Because you need a lot of stuff to make another stuff to make another stuff sort of situation. And you can do your ship trading. You check the various exo tools and things, and can dismantle ships and sell ships. So there's a huge amount to do, not counting like all the expedition stuff where you just start a fresh character on this expedition, or all right. Uh, I want to do that one. But yeah, this is No Man's Sky. Space battles and building houses and building bases and you can take over settlements and become the mayor of like a settlement. Battle giant robots. I didn't show you the giant robots, but I don't know if we should show you the giant robots. But yeah, there's a lot to do. And it's all in the game now. So it's kind of like it's developed. It's gone through a lot of development. So it's kind of one of those things where Starfield will be... I think better in terms of some aspects, in terms of SP FPS and first person, and maybe the loot will be a little bit more exciting at times. That said, the loot's pretty exciting in this, too. And then the various mixing of the elements, you won't even have that sort of stuff in Starfield. You'll have more sort of raw component type situation, I would have thought, a bit more sort of basic items and things. But. I'm looking forward to when Starfield eventually comes to PlayStation 5 on 2027. Um, and yeah, I, I mean, hopefully this sort of gives you an idea. I've got a lot of synergistic upgrades here that boost, you know, how much money I get from scanning things and how much heat dispersion and stuff like that. There's a lot going on. There's a lot going on. A lot of hard work, but I do recommend guides and things. But, you know, Starfield, you know, I think, I don't know. it's kind of weird. The, what, I think No Man's Sky is a good game. Now it's a good game. But there's some elements to it I don't agree with in terms of design, design decisions, fundamentals. And I think that has a lot to do with how you drive your motivations. Which is, it is mostly up to you. But I feel like, you know, Fallout 4 and, and in, you know, from what we've seen from Starfield, that the motivations will be a bit more obvious and more clearly articulated in a way that's simplistic but easier to just kind of get you on the train of progression to go through and then having actual levels up and skills and things rather than just suit upgrades i think is a bit more immersive i prefer that i prefer i like leveling up everyone like you know rpg elements i think are always a good thing to have if they fit so and the personalization of using the weapons you want to use and that sort of thing like that So they're different games, very different, but there's a lot of things that transfer over. I hope there's a lot of things I've shown you that 
are obvious that start field is going to do. And yeah, your place in the world, I think, is probably going to be the big difference. Because you're kind of, you're an anomaly, but there's lots of other anomalies. But you matter, and then you sort of... Eh. There's a whole deep dives about the story in No Man's Sky, and it is, you know, very... You know, it has a lot more... There's a lot going on, but at the same time, for the casual enjoyer, it's going to be over your head for the most part. We'll see. We'll see how it goes with Starfield. Um, this has been a really long video because that's what happens when you play No Man's Sky. It just you just sort of time just seems to go, and you just seem to do this and that, and you're up there, and all of a sudden you're there, you're doing things, and yeah. If you're excited for Starfield, I think you could you'll enjoy playing No Man's Sky. I think it'll give you that taste of what games have tried to do with space exploration and and procedural generation and give you some sort of framework to judge Starfield from I think it'd be better in terms of you're not just going to compare it to the the outer worlds obsidian game because you've got like a couple of planets and just a lot of dialogue and average combat below average combat and no aliens so this is the thing I, that's one of the things I'm worried about is they're sort of copying that direction of they weren't just English speaking people they don't want aliens as much and it's kind of like you'll have aliens on the planets like in as in non speaking alien organisms but I don't know I still feel like we're waiting for like a Star Trek game that actually is what it should be and that's kind of mixing in both probably more heavy dialogue so mixing like the outer worlds and mixing no man's sky procedural generation and mixing you do want strong storytelling in a star trek type open open universe game yeah i've just waffled on and on if you're still here like and subscribe if not like and subscribe anyway <laughs> tell me what you think do you think starfield will be better than no man's sky i think it will and i don't think it'll be too hard to do that but I feel like it's going to be... It's missing a lot. So it doesn't have multiplayer, so... But is multiplayer make or break? We'll see. We'll see how people feel about it. What sort of mods come out. Whether they... Uh, you know, because it is... That's the benefit. It's a single-player game. It'll have mods. If it was a multiplayer game, they wouldn't want mods. So this is kind of the big positive. And we'll see how it all shakes loose. See how God Howard produces at the end of the day. How many bugs there are. How many, you know, glitches and an economy glitches they'll be to make them infinite money instantly of course they will be but yeah catch you